we are going to talk about one of my favorite measuring tools, the dial caliper. Now, um, this one is an analog dial caliper. Yes, they come, or calipers, I should say, they come digital caliper. It has a little digital readout here, and you got to press the button to turn it on and off. Um, it's kind of convenient because you can hit a button to change it from metric to standard, which is nice. Um, but I do love my good old dial caliper. No batteries needed. Um, this has been really trusty and I use this all the time for woodworking, for measuring parts, all kinds of things. And so um, we're gonna talk about first the four ways, yes, there are four, a lot of people know about three, uh, but there are four ways we can use this in order to take measurements. So the first one uh, most people know is if I wanna take an outside measurement like this, can squeeze those jaws together, and I've got an outside measurement of this bearing, for instance. Uh, if I want to take an inside diameter, measurement, I can go ahead and close my jaws here, and then I can slide that open and get a inside measurement right there. A third, a third way we can use this is I can use this to measure depth. Um, let's say I wanted to see how deep this was right here. So what I like to do is actually slide this down like that, um, take that tail, push that the top down into my part until the back touches and that will give me the depth of my part. Now, the fourth way, a lot of people don't know about this, but on the back of the calipers, you can see the back piece and the front piece, they actually are flush when that is closed. And what we can do is actually measure steps of things because I can take that and kind of guess like, well, how long is that? Now, typically I wouldn't measure this because it just, it is what it is. But if I wanted to know what that was, what I can do is I can actually put this on that surface, but I'm going to put it behind and I'm going to slide that so it just touches right there. And that will give me that step and that measurement of that particular item I want to measure. So those are the four ways, inner diameter, outer diameter, depth, and step. So it's super convenient when we're using this. But if you've never used this before, well, how do you actually read this? And it's it's actually pretty easy. Um, there's some things you need to keep in mind. So um, let's take a look at that real quick and let me show you how we're gonna read our scale here. So before we talk about how to read this, which is actually really easy, um, let's talk about just the anatomy of the dial caliper and what you need to be aware of. So uh, I got my, my outer diameter jaws here. I got a little bit of a point on the kind of the bottom 20% and then I've got this flat portion here. Uh, I'm really not using the inside here. Try and stay away from using the inside there. I'm only using from here down. So that's a good um, thing to note. Also, I always want to make sure that I'm always zeroed out before I begin. Just don't assume um, that I'm going to hit zero just because I pulled this out of the box. Something may have dropped it or it may have got bumped or something may have happened. Um, I always want to confirm. So if it is off like that, what I can do is I can loosen this set screw off for the face and I can just twist that face until my needle lines up with my zero right there. So I think a little more, that looks pretty good right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and snug that down. Now we're lined up and I always like to run this out and run it back in just to kind of confirm. You can see I'm still a little, uh, I'm a little off, I'm a little off. Let's, let's get this dialed in here. There we go. So I can, again, I wanna bring it back and just double check. And now we're right on, that's perfect. That's exactly where we want it to be. Okay, so we've got our set screw here to hold our face in place. We also have another set screw on the top. So when I take my measurement, for example, I've got this bearing here, I can kind of hold that there and just snug that down, take my bearing out. And now that's just locked in position, so now I don't have to worry about this getting bumped and now taking another measurement, it's good to go. Another nice feature is the thumb wheel here, so this makes it one-handed, so I can hold my part with one hand if I need to. And just roll this back with my thumb and just roll that back up. I'm not putting a lot of tension on it, but that makes it really convenient as well, right there. So that's my thumb wheel. Those are your main parts you need to know. So let's talk about how we actually read this if we are going to take a measurement. Along my scale here, I've got a large zero, and then I've got one through nine, and then a one, one through nine, two, one through nine, all the way up to a large six, all the way right there. 
So I can measure anything from 0 0.001 up to six inches, which makes this really versatile. I can use this for taking all kinds of measurements and all kinds of things with that broad of a range. And it's just a really great tool. So how I would read this, I'm always looking first at what large number am I past? That's my inch. So for example, I right, got my zero, my one, my two, and let's just take this. I just kind of put this here. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to say this is my two, so that's my large two, so this is two inches. Then I'm going to look at where this jaw, which line it is just past. So I am just past the two line, so this would be 2.2. .2. And then I'm going to look at my dial, and that dial is pointing at the 10. It's, it happens to be right on 10, so the way I would read this is 2.210. So just looking at this real quick visually, Really easy to read, really easy to understand. One thing you need to be aware of is where my needle is. So for example, let's go like right there. So right here, you'll see, I can see that four, but I am not to that four until that needle hits that zero. Every time I'm on a zero here, I am either on a whole number or one of these thousands marks. So for example, if I'm on that four, you can see I'm on that zero. And if I go around one time, one revolution, that's 100 thousandths, now I'm on the five. So that'll be 1.5000, right? 1.6000. So if I am right there, I know that my jaw, that I can see that six there, but I am not to the six yet. So this would actually read 1.595. Uh, on this caliper. Now, if I was here, right, 597, oh, a little too far, that would be 1.599, right? So I always want to kind of confirm where I'm at here with my dial here and make sure that if I see that six, am I at six? Well, no, not quite. Now I am, and now I am, right? So for example, let's go a little bit further. Let's go like right there. So well, let's go a little, let's go a little more. Let's do a little bit different one. Let's go here. I like this. Let's go like right there. So this one, we are at the whole number two, and we haven't hit the one yet. So this would be 2.003, right? Because we haven't even hit that 100 thousandths mark there. So 2.003 is how we would read this measurement here. So Again, this is really easy to read once you get the hang of it. I always, one, look at my whole number, see which one I'm at. Second thing I wanna do is see which one of these hundred thousandths mark I am at with my jaw, and then just confirm that with where my needle is pointing on my dial, making sure am I in front of that zero or behind the zero, or maybe I'm right on that zero. Maybe I'm right on one of these numbers, right? And then third, I wanna just look at where my needle is pointing on my dial, and that's gonna give me my um, hundreds and thousands place there. So again, really easy to read. So for example, let's do this one. Let's do our bearing. It's a good example. I always have to replace bearings. So I got that right there and I'll lock it down, take it out. So this one would read 1.379, 1.379 right there. That's a good, a good example. Uh, if I want to take an interior measurement, I'm going to take my jaws, close it, put them inside there, make sure I'm nice and square. I want to pull real tight, but I want to be pretty snug. Okay, lock that down. Take it out. And this, again, I don't have a whole number there. I'm at zero, okay? And I know I can see the six, but I'm not quite to the six yet because my needle has not hit that zero on the dial. So. This is gonna be 0 0.5, and I'm a little closer to that eight mark. This one would be 0 0.588. So let's do a third way. Uh, I've got the tailstock here, and let's say I wanna measure uh, the depth of this. So what I can do, what I like to do is kind of push, I like sliding this out a little bit, and then just kind of pushing that tailstock down into my part push this down till it touches the top and the distance from here to here is going to be reflected here. So this one would be 0 
0 0.739, 0 0.739. That's the third way we can use this with our tailstock. The fourth way, and this is called a step. Let's say, for example, I wanted to know what the distance is from here to here. And I can't really fit, I mean, I can kind of guess, but that's not super accurate there. Um, and I can kind of put that in there and kind of put that flat and kind of guess. But if I needed a really good, accurate measurement, what I can do is use the back of this. You'll notice when I have this closed, these are parallel. So what I can do is open this up. I can put that flat on this part, flat on my part like that. And then just close this on what I want to take a measurement of, just like that. Flip it around, and there's my measurement there. Let's lock this down so I don't lose it. So this one would be 0 0.481. That would be my distance there from kind of the shoulder here from here to there. So that's the fourth way we can use this. So hopefully that helps you understand a couple different ways that you can use this and just how easy it is to use, even if you don't have the one with the battery. Um, these aren't really that hard to use. They are a little pricey. Um, I, they do have ones that are like $12, $20, Home Depot, big box stores. Uh, you can get pretty decent ones uh, similar to this. Um, pretty decent quality for about $40. And I'll put a link down below on Amazon, you can pick one of those up. Um, and even more expensive ones, it kind of depends on your budget. But uh, $40 ones that I've used a lot, I'll put a link down below and I, I can vouch for those. I use those in my classroom all the time and they get beat up by kids and can take a look and, and keep on ticking. So um, try it, try tr using these in maybe that fourth way that you've never used it before or the different ways you've never used it before. Um, give it a shot. You'll, f I think you'll find that it's actually pretty easy to use once you kind of just take a look at it and spend some time with this. No batteries needed. Uh, go have fun. And in the next video, we're going to show you kind of how I use this in a shop in some really practical ways for you. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a link right up there pretty soon. And we'll see you in the next one.